Welcome back to Switch to Linux. As we usually like to do when Linux Mint releases an update, we like to cover that for those that are just not really wanting to read the blog post, but just kind of get what the news is. So they did release a update, uh, Clem did a couple of days ago on the 8th. What was that, uh, Thursday? Yeah, we were too busy on Thursday and Friday and on Saturday. So hey, we're doing it today. So uh, in this one here, there's a lot in this about theming. So we'll discuss some of that. So so the first up is we have code names for the next Linux Mint 22.2 and also for LMDE 7, which is going to be coming out. Uh, Zara is 22.2 and uh, GG is LMDE 7. So if you are um, looking forward to those, pay attention to uh, those and uh, future updates about the progress of those will be coming along very soon. He does start out talking about the PewDiePie uh, stuff here, just saying we have a new user. How many of us? We don't count. Dozens at least. Welcome to uh, welcome to Linux PewDiePie. Now, this actually, uh, one person in the comments got down here and was like, why do you need to do this? Blah, blah, blah. You know, there were some people that uh, did not like the PewDiePie video because they thought it put put Linux in front of too many normies. And there are certainly a group of Linux users that don't want a lot of normies in Linux. Frankly, I think that it's good to have more people over here. More people know that there are alternatives to Mac and Windows, the better it's going to be. That means donations increase. That means more people are aware of it. More bug reports are done. There's a lot of good factors for this. Now, uh, I can sort of, in a way, see the opposite side because the more Linux becomes mainstreamed, you know, in one end, more hackers might start looking at it. Another end, uh, you know, more media might be raising concerns about it in the way that they like dramatizing and polarizing everything. We get that, understandable. And of course, uh, there are certainly negative elements when something becomes very mainstreamed. Then uh, what can actually happen here is um, uh, more, you know, Basically, it draws more attention. Things become more corporatized. But the reality is that's not going to impact Linux nearly as much as many people think. Uh, first and foremost, there are already some corporatized levels of uh, Linux. Look at uh, like Ubuntu is going corporate. Fedora in some ways is going corporate. But there's always going to be people that are like, no, nah, we're not playing that game, bro. And that's the good news about Linux is it is so, uh, and I'll use fragmented here in a good sense, that it's not going to be income. It's not going to turn into Windows. It's not going to turn into Mac because it's so broad. So while some people have said, why call out this person and not everybody who's using it? Well, it's because this person has a unique position to be able to introduce Linux to the masses. Millions of people who never even heard of Linux or think Linux is all just scary command line stuff now know it's not. And frankly, I think that's a positive thing in that respect. So I'm getting to say that. And uh, full disclosure, I didn't do a video on the PewDiePie Linux situation. I haven't even watched his video on it. I just try not to get that involved involved in YouTube drama. Unless somebody tries to draw me into it like that moron last year, uh, I'm, you know what, y'all go be drama guys somewhere else. I'm sorry, I'm not here for drama. I'm here for te uh, technical and how to and, and stuff that is a lot better than the drama end. Now we get into some of the theming stuff, which was a little bit of an interesting read, although probably not for everybody. Most people might look at this and go like, who cares? What are you doing? So they say here a hint of blue in Mint Y. So if you have a look at uh, the Linux Mint theming, then you'll see there's there are some a lot of grays in the uh, in the side boxes there. I'll just pull it up over here. I'm not going to show it on the screen, but yeah, I'm just looking at it. It's, it's just solid straight grays. And there's been a lot of discussion. He links here to a Reddit discussion about UX design, uh, why sh gray shades always lean, and you know why Apple's system w website gray shades always lean. You know, basically looking at the colors and how people interpret the colors. And, and there are a lot of feelings people get. So basically what he's doing is, if you look at GitHub here, he says, says it's not a pure gray. He says it's like a gray with a very slight hint of blue. And he says we're simply following the modernized approach with this. 
slightly shifting their color theme to match that. And then we got into a discussion about Lib Adweda. So, of course, last year there was a discussion about Lib Adweda and Linux Mint did, was not really happy with the direction they were going with functionality and UI design. It's, it's uh, in my opinion, I just think the whole GNOME ecosystem, it just looks big, bubbly, and it, to me it looks unprofessional. It looks childish. Um, we can understand in one direction why they go that route. It is easier if you're on a touch screen. So you, there is always that. Of course, they're trying to do some adaptation to be used for a touch screens, for tablets, computers, things like that. So I can understand it. But at the same time, I'm just not, uh, I'm not really on board with the look of it personally. But unfortunately, there are a lot of people that are. We'll get a little bit more of that in a bit. But Effectively, what they did is they looked at Lib Adweda, who was also adopting a little bit of the blue, and they mimicked that exact color tone into their theming. So if you happen to have Lib Adweda applications alongside of your Mint applications, the style and the color would look very, very similar. And they did this for Unity, and uh, they're going to get into that a little bit more here in the bottom. Uh, but uh, over here, they just mentioned they're adding a very, very slight blue hint. It's not like the blue accent colors that they switched to. I still wish they kind of saved green. But anyway, it's not just that, but it is uh, it's inside of the menus. It's inside of your uh, your selections. They're just adding a very slight hint of blue, which will enable the. Uh, enable the system to just kind of look a lot more modern like a lot of other systems. Some people like that. Some people don't. I personally, and I'm, I'm kind of neutral about it. As long as I can clearly see with contrast what's supposed to be where, I don't really care what they do with it as long as the functionality hasn't changed. Now, this brings us to another one is the accent colors. So uh, XDJ Desktop Portable X app now supports accent colors. The reason is there's a lot of applications that now support accent colors. It will look for your uh, system default accent color. And since this is something that Linux Mint added in a couple of years ago with their new advanced theming or their new simplified theming, I should say, the old theming is now advanced theming. The newer theming is a simplified, which does rely on accent colors. Now what they can do is if you are developing an application for this, then there is a simple uh, defining of the accent color and your application will then look for the system defined application color to match the theming of your custom system with the application, which brings more unity into the theme because some people really, really are bothered if they have an application that's styled differently than another application. I personally don't give a crap because I personally care about uh, do, do things functionally work. I don't need everything to look perfectly, aesthetically, exactly the same. I just want my system to work. Now, I am unusual in that respect. I realize most people, it really will bother them if they pull up two applications and one of them is themed a little bit different than the other. <sighs> Some people go into conniption fits on that, okay? We're solving that conniption fit problem, so this is actually a really good thing. So we're kind of getting a chance to see that. And this brings us in down into the Lib Adweda discussion. So they did away with the uh, Lib Adweda a couple years ago. They backported every application back to the GNOME app versions that would use GTK3 in order to keep consistent theming throughout because they just didn't want that. Now, you could still get the newer ones if you installed newer things. You could patch them all in, and then you would have an abominable looking system that gets back to going a little too far out of the way. But anyway, so, but they are looking at this going, we really need a good coherent unified system without having to rely on the older programs. And they did say that this went back into a lot more fractioning. And um, that really is, uh, is a challenge they want to deal with. They say down here that uh, whether we downgrade or fork applications, I know many of the GNOME developers are as sad as we are about the fragmentation and the duplication of efforts. So they were talking here about uh, extracting the EPUB support reader out of XReader. Uh, despite there's uh, good applications like Foliate, which is a GNOME-based application. And so they're looking at ways that they can make all of this work. And so what they were actually doing here is uh, they made some changes. They took these style sheets from 
Lib Adweda, they merged them around, putting them into the Mint Y and the Mint X themes. And then they made some uh, tweaks to the Lib Adweda package that Linux Mint is shipping in order to use the themes as they would tie it. And this actually allowed them to get your your various uh, applications relying on Lib Adweda with the GTK4 theming properly inside of Linux Mint. So this actually seems to be something of a, a little bit of a tweak solved a little bit of the problem. They're going to continue working forward with this so that they can you know, not have that extra fragmentation and then easily allowing most GNOME applications to work well with inside Linux Mint without doing any external tweaking. And all this is going to rely on is doing a brief tweak to the libadweta packages and just a couple of small tweaks inside of, uh, inside of their code. So this is actually good news for people that do use a lot of GNOME-based applications that uh, they did not like the fact that Linux Mint was holding back some of those into GTK3. And uh, now going forward, it looks like in 22.2, we should actually see some of those applications brought back up to date with the more modern standards. That's kind of the uh, the interpretation that I got looking at this, uh, what they were doing. And I'm actually getting a chance to see the GIF here for the very first time because uh, when the writing computer, I, I, I was reading the article on my writing computer computer while I was downloading a distro and this GIF was not loading on that computer. Uh, probably something with that computer still running a Linux kernel 4 or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, uh, overall, it lo does look pretty good. So you can adjust the styles. The applications are working right. And they're actually able to get everything working well and smoothly. So this is just, once again, Linux Mint's just doing a lot of really good things moving forward. And uh, with that, uh, we'll leave this nice short video here. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, if you are new to Linux, I'd highly encourage you to have a look at Linux Mint as your uh, distribution of choice, at least to get started and get into the Linux ecosystem. And then you can get a chance to experiment around and see what else uh, is out there. With that, thank you for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.